My interest in conservation started when I used to see a lot of vehicles driving past a little township where I come from, which is Mkutlu Township, going to Skukuza in the Kruger National Park. But I never knew where Kruger National Park was, um, and only recently did I find out that it's only 44 kilometers from where I live. I also loved fishing and I also used to go hunting, but mostly what we used to do was um, shooting birds. Uh, surprisingly, we used to shoot birds, mostly it was for food. Although I wanted to do conservation, I didn't know what it was about. For me, I thought I was going to be one of those guys driving the vehicles, taking people to view game. Start now. Ignition starts now. Everybody copy. I work for City of Cape Town. My job we refer to as regional managers because we're managing two districts. So I'm a conservation regional manager. I manage three nature reserves and in there I've got a team of three area managers. I see myself as a facilitator. That's why I get involved in just about everything that my team does. Working for the city of Cape Town, I became aware of the challenges um, of trying to reconcile urban development with the conservation of ecological processes, more so because the city of Cape Town is rich in biodiversity and the intense urbanization leads to the fragmentation of natural areas as well as wetlands and rivers. I built the interest of pollination and how that can you know, rehabilitate and restore ecological processes because research has revealed that some of the plant species which rely on bird pollination uh, were somehow dwindling because of fragmentation. I wanted to do a project that can link science and people, but I didn't know how that was translated into something that people can understand. This project that you see here is about linking the broken fragments of um, bird uh, migrations from the mountains to the lowlands nature reserve within the Cape Flats. We're hoping to have the birds start to use those roots and create a memory that they can then come back to Rondeflay and begin to re-pollinate um, so this is a very important destination for this project. What I had to do initially was to uh, establish whether are there birds here. I would come in here and I would stand for 20 minutes maximum. So I would actually count any bird that comes within the plot that I've identified here. These birds, without them, most of the species that you see here would not be pollinated. What that means is these species would therefore go extinct because they would have no agent to uh, pollinate them. Should we go to that little patch there? Yeah, where where, where we're going to? to them so okay. The title of the study is the Injuju Project. Now the Injuju means, it's, it's a closer word just to start with, but it refers to birds with long beaks. How many students do we have? There's about 30. There's about 30. Yeah. So um, imagine this being the, the mountain range, okay? And this being the Crestway. And this being Stienberg. This being Lavender Hill here. And then Musenberg High School. And um, then you have Rondeflay somewhere here. By planting 
nectar rich plants at these schools, we're therefore creating a nectar resource for them, which means that the birds would then uh, come from the mountains, get to um, Musenberg High School, hypothetically, get to Musenberg High School, and they would then create a memory that there is nectar available in the flats. So the aim is to have the bird from here, okay, to fly around the area, see this place here, stop, and drink nectar. Because we're talking about these birds here. It's a Malachite sun bird, the Cape sugar bird, is a southern double collared sun bird, and is the orange breasted sun bird. The birds okay up the mountains here, all right? They also okay in Rondeflé, but Rondeflé they have become limited. Why are they limited? Because you need schools, you need housing, and you need roads. Now when we say threatened, it means that development threatens their survival. Because if they don't have enough food, they will perish. That's why these four species of birds pollinate just over 350 plant species in the Fenbos biome. They are very, very important. I'm just doing my MSc. I started applying at CPUT. And just before I registered, um, the supervisor there said, why don't you meet my colleague at Stellenbosch, Professor Anton Paul. When I met him, we clicked at first contact. Hey, Anton. How's it going? He's my mentor. Good, good, good. Uh, that's where the supervisor is. Um, you know, he doesn't do the writing. He doesn't do the work for me, but he pushes. Surprisingly, he also had the same idea of connecting the silver mine in the Musenberg with the smaller reserves like Rondeflay, which are lying on the Cape Flats. Bongani's project at the moment is, um, in a sense, a pilot project because it only involves eight schools and a relatively short corridor between Rondeflay Nature Reserve and Musenberg Mountain. But it would be fantastic to link that corridor right across the Cape Flats to um, allow birds to move more freely through urban areas. We know at the moment that the sugar birds and the malachite sunbirds only venture one kilometer into the city and then they can't take it anymore and they come back to natural areas. So for them to cross an area like the Cape Flats would be impossible at the moment. After fires on the Cape Peninsula, for example, how are they gonna to get to new areas to feed? So if you imagine the entire mountain range burning, there will be no food. What would the birds have to do? They would have to come down the slopes. So that's one of the reasons why we're establishing these gardens here. So that when there's a fire that side, they can then come down and still have some food. Bongani's project is a start, but ultimately we want to link that through to the whole city. And the idea is basically, I think, transferable to other cities in the world. Um, why not? Now the aim for that is to create um, stepping stones. Have you guys played the games where you jump around like that on the stepping stones? All right, have you? You go to the next block, all right? Mm -hmm. There you go. We see this uh, Malachi sunbird. It's sitting on a protea plant. We'll be planting some of these here. The um, Stransali, your aloes, your protea species. So as they're sticking their beaks in the flower heads, they're collecting pollen on their heads or on their front noses. And when they move on to another flower, they leave it there and that pollinates the flower. How many of you have tasted nectar from a, from a plant? Hmm? I love that. I love the honesty. And I need you guys to be honest. You know why? Because when you don't know you learn. Mm -hmm. So I need you guys to come here with a fresh mind and I don't want you guys to compete, I want you guys to share your knowledge. Mm -hmm. You guys will be playing a role in coming every morning to this garden right here to see what birds they are. And you're going to put it on a data sheet 
or you're going to put it on a smartphone. Is there water in the school? No. Is there no water? That is, that is one of the biggest things at the school. Okay. Water pump was stolen. Okay. The people I'm working with here are employed by the City of Cape Town's projects. These are people that often do not have skills. Uh, they're coming from areas where income is low, living conditions poor. But what we're doing with them here today, it's a different skill which they can learn and add to the skills that they already have. And this one here involves the preparation of um, garden beds, how the soil must look, and then they would also learn how to plant. Um, oh, and so 2009, Crotias was big, they haven't flowered. Yeah. And we're buying like seeded. <laughs> that are year old. Yeah, but are they going to get more water? <laughs> Less competition. <laughs> it's worrying. Well, here we go. Here's an ideal situation. Look, so here's a... So this is, so this is one of the cages, Bongani. Mm -hmm. um, there are six of them. There's one over there, and there's this one, and then five others on the slope over there. You might not be able to see them. Okay, it's us. In your project, you know, you're focusing very much on trying to bring birds back into areas where they've been lost. Yes. Um, but can we really predict what is going to happen in situations like that? Um, we know that we are all over the world losing pollinators, but can we predict what happens when we do lose them? And an experiment like this can potentially give one those answers. Mm -hmm. You know, you creating a community which um, is similar to the community outside, but yeah. that lacks birds. Yeah. One change that you might expect is mm. that inside the enclosure, where the birds are excluded, um, the proteas and other nectar-producing plants yeah. um, will start having more nectar. Mm -hmm. um, the birds are removed as a consumer, so the volume of nectar should increase, mm -hmm. and that should change the way that these plants interact now with the insects in the community. Mm -hmm. They should attract more bees, for example, than they did before, mm -hmm. because there's now a new nectar source that's not being utilized. Oh yeah, there's lots of nectar. So there's, I mean, in one little attempt like that, you can easily get five microliters, you know, so oh it'll be God, one, one, two, four, three, four, that. five. Yeah. It's not even bubbles. Very few plants are able to reproduce on their own as an island. They need to link through to other elements of the environment. You need to conserve the other elements and the processes on which those plants are depending. Mm -hmm. Now, if you have a look through there, you can see the, the sugar concentration of the nectar. Mm, oh, I need to see the darker line. Lasium, aloeaborescent, Protea cineroides, Protea repens, Protea bucelli, uh, Leonotus leonurus. <laughs> okay, in no heaven, eh? please. I am focused, I know what I want, and I'm doing it. Bongani, huh? do you have an idea of uh, how you want the groupings of the species? Um, we're going to be guided by which one needs more sun. We want to form a pattern. Okay. So it must look like more or less like a natural garden, natural, but natural. still making sure that there's the protection from wind. So we just need to get these out if we can. Eh? He came to us and said, I've got this project I want to do. Um, what species can you suggest? Um, and would you be able to grow a few species in the nursery? I think you've got to be positive with these sort of things. And uh, if you aren't going to try it, then who else is, you know? I like that because it means that Mr. Fogvain told you exactly what this project is about. But how do you feel about it? We're excited! You know that you're going to plant with me here today? Yeah! yeah. What woods now that you also use in the garden? Manure. Manure. Oh, Put the compost. I'm gonna do one bow so that you guys, all of you, can see me. We're going to grow and look like one of these, right? And what species of plant are you planting? Okay, is it a Watsonia or Chesmanta? Chesmanta. Chesmanta. And then the species is Gloribata. What does it look like? 
Yes, far away, yeah. Me African is simple, yeah. Good morning, good year, okay. I was surprised that you know the teachers, the principals, and even the kids—they were so excited at this project. It's fantastic for our school. It's mm -hmm. a privilege for our children. It's like having Kirsten Bosch right here. Those with after a kick in the mumbai, as a mere sweet stuff for us. I was in the mind to say, I say again, 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 this is bringing education, the curriculum, to the ground. Oh, my this God, is what lovely. you are doing. So, mwah, <laughs> I love your study. I mean, the project gives me massive hope. You know, when I go to the schools and I see these kids and I see their enthusiasm, and especially when I see the enthusiasm of school teachers, I realize how easy it is to spread this idea and how readily people take it up and how keen people really are to conserve nature and be a part of it if they are just given an open door through which to move forward. I think it's a fantastic idea and it should be compulsory to have every school in the Western Cape to have a biodiversity garden. I've seen, you know, even in Maitland where I did some um, gardening and things like that, after a while, you know, the birds, they do come because they know where, where, where these plants are, you know, and things like that. They can smell it, they can see it and things like that. You know, they will come, the birds will come. <laughs> Nee, maar die bloemetjes van die aantrekkingskrachtjes, nee, hulle kom specifiek vir die nektar en die bloemen. This city is now going to proclaim 16 nature reserves and natural areas. And it has built very important and critical networks that has enabled us to become one of the critical players in the uh, conservation of biodiversity. I think that we must remember that many of the big cities in the world, like Cape Town for example, or San Francisco, are placed right in the core of extremely biodiverse areas. So cities need to take cognizance of that fact and need to be designed um, in ways that are compatible with conserving biodiversity. I actually see myself as a catalyst. You know, if we have these schools being vegetated with nectar-rich plants, it means that the city which was previously vegetated, connecting the Table Mountain, Musenberg with the Gardens Bay, Pal Mountains. You now have that pattern. You have the stepping stones across the city. Now imagine that. So you have a city that is developed, but you have a city that is connected through indigenous gardens that can sustain sugar beds and sun beds. So this is not the end, but this is the beginning. How do we say this? It's not our garden, it's my garden. Huh? My God, it belongs to you. Mozas, 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 Matze, Mozas, 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 Matze, Mozas, Maké, 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 Best for the Lord.